You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. A tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery. And you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself. The next thing is develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valuable. Develop a health plan, a plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you love you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. You want to live life with energy and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. So you've got to learn to stand up to yourself inside yourself and short circuit, override that conversation that's always going on. 85% of what that conversation will tell you is negative. It's negative. It will tell you you're tired when you really are not tired. It will tell you you can't do it. It will fill you with fear. So you've got to watch that conversation. And when you find it going on, you've got to stand up to it and say, I'm going to do this anyhow. I'm afraid, but I'm afraid not to do it. And I'm not going to let you stop. The biggest challenge that you will have in life is you. There's an old African proverb that says, is there's no enemy within. The enemy outside can do us no harm. Everybody in this room wants two things. Everybody wants to be successful and everybody wants to be happy. I'm going to tell you something about that. That that happiness and success is available for every last one of you. But I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do. You got to change your mindset. If you're planning on being successful, you have to change this here. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is right here. It ain't no difference. It ain't none. If you want to be successful, you got to change your mind and you're going to have to have some faith. The first way to get focus is to find purpose. The way to find purpose is you must identify what it is that you have to be purposeful in. Right When you are struggling with what to do, who you are, what's your next move, you are in an identity crisis. You are struggling with just who you are. See, you have not discovered who you are. You have to discover who you are in order to move you forward. If no one ever gave you the directions, let me assume something. When you get up and you get up in the morning, you go get in the car or you walk out your door, you have a destination in mind. If you go outside with no destination, what do you do? You just, you wander around. Once you don't have a destination, you are going to wander around. You cannot get in your car without a destination. Where did you, what do you drive? So you are in an identity crisis, the same thing I was in. So you have to find your purpose. What do you want? What gives you your life? What, how will you know when you got it? What will make you happy? You need to know. You need to start asking yourself some questions. What do I really, really, truly want? 
You need to be exact about that. Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How will you know when you got it? In what you've done with your life thus far, is it giving you what you want? Is it giving you what you want? When you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here, is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. I know there's some great music that I have within me that I haven't brought out here yet. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? So I used to do that and I used to go to big rallies and see guys up speaking when I wasn't courageous enough to go out there and say, hey, uh, my name is Les Brown, the motivator, Mamie Brown's boy, I want to talk. I, I would never do that. I just was, I'd just be back there looking at him and wanted to get the autograph and would say, can I, can I meet you, Mr. Mr. Wakeley or this, can I meet Mr. Zig Ziglar? Please tell him, um, who are you? Oh, Les Brown. Let me because I felt within myself I was a nobody. So who am I to go talk to these guys and go get their autographs? I like to do what you do. See, I say if you look at your life and if, and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. You owe, If you're on a job, 85%, they say, of Americans go to jobs, that you're unhappy. If you're doing something eight hours a day that you don't like, it's not giving you what you want, it's not giving you a strong feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment. You're miserable, you hate to go there. You're depressed just thinking about it. You're saying, the, thank God it's Friday song every week. It's giving you headaches just thinking about it on Sunday afternoon after the football game goes off. If that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. See, but you know what most people will do? Most people will resist change. Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. See, they know this. They're familiar with this. Most people will not challenge the unknown. They won't just step out there. See, they, well, See, there are certain things that's got to be in place. they got to see it all together. And life isn't like that. That's not how you grow. So as you look at your life, you're saying, I'm not getting what I want. As you begin to look toward the future, begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that, you've got that in you. You've got that. You've got genius in you. You've got goodness in you. You've got creativeness in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side, that life is on your side. Now, will it be turbulent? Yes. Will it be easy? No, no. Will you have some opposition? Yes. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Will I get hurt? Yes. Yes. See, a lot of people won't try anything different in life because they don't want to get hurt. Let me tell you something. It's too much pain to duck. Pain is everywhere. You can hide under here. It will come where you are. I'm really, if I go back here, pain will come. Hey, Les, come on out. It will come. It's everywhere. Victor Frankl calls it unavoidable suffering. You can't duck it. But most people spend their life not wanting to deal with the pain of rejection, the pain of defeat, the pain of being disappointed, the pain of losing, the pain of failure, the pain of being criticized, the pain of not being liked, the pain, the pain, the pain. That's called life. Life is full of pain. It's everywhere. But guess what? There's no gain without pain. A lot of things that happen to us that we think are negative or, or bad experience, these are lessons in what 
and what not to do. This is a, 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 a way to have a now, a bearing on. Look out for it the next time. You know, you, you got me once, you can't get me again. I'm telling you, man, if God got you through it, it's done, move on. You have got to move on. I use this analogy all the time. I'm going to add a little bit to it. Bishop Jakes told me you cannot drive your car looking in the rear view mirror. I was talking to a young singer yesterday who I ran up into. And man, let me tell you something. This this analogy, or I told him we had about 20 minute conversation. See, you know what your rear view mirror is actually for in your car? I was just tripping on this one. Actually, your rear view mirror is designed, and this is what I use it for. After I pass a car and I want to merge into that lane or I want to make another move, I look up in the rear view mirror and all I use it for, it shows me that I've gotten past it and I got enough room now clear to make my next move. That's what I use my rear view mirror for. I use my rear view mirror to just glance up every now and then to see what's coming up on me. That's all I use it for. The rear view mirror, when you're passing through something, listen to me real close. Your rear view mirror on your car is after you're passing something or you're passing by something, you can look up in the rear view mirror and it lets you know you passed it. You're beyond it. It's clear now. It's in the past. You no longer have to deal with it as the car that was in front of you blocking your way. You have passed it. You look up in the mirror. You've cleared it. Now, if you want to switch lanes, you could slide on over. You got room. But that rear view mirror also lets you see if anything is coming up on you. And you just need to glance because if you moving forward, ain't a whole lot can come up on you. You just glancing every now and then. And it reminds you that you got through something and you got beyond something. That's what the rear view mirror for. Now let's talk about that windshield. Why you think that windshield is so big on your car? That's the biggest window on your car. You know why the windshield is so big? Because it's where you're going. Because even the automobile makers want you to have a wide view of where you're going. Because it's the pain of regret that you experience. If I had it to do over again, that's a pain. Don't you know that's a when you know I was in a seminar once and this lady stood up. If I had my life to live over again, she talked about all of the things that she would do. And you can feel the pain of regret in her voice. The pain of regret. She still experienced pain. She was trying not to experience the pain of defeat, the pain of disappointment, the pain of loss, the pain of lack of support. And she still experienced pain. It was right there. We can't get around it. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and the opinions of others. A lot of people never try anything differently because they have been convinced by people in their lives that they value that they can't do it. They're living within the context of the opinions that other people have of them, the low expectations. Many people doubt themselves because when they thought about doing something at some critical point in their life, somebody they respected and honored, somebody they believed in, somebody that they loved, someone they trusted said, you can't do that. And they accepted that. That's why I didn't go off to college. I had an instructor that I believed who said, you're not college material, Mr. Brown. You're not as smart as your brother Wesley or your sister Margaret Ann. You're not college material. Why don't you try and get your job at the post office? Try and do something with your hand or go down to the Miami City Sanitation Department and see can you get a job there? Or why don't you try and go into the Army? I took that test, Mr. Tellers, already. What happened? I failed. I told you. Anybody fail the Army test, you're really in trouble. So I went down to the sanitation department to try and get a job because that's what I believe was possible for me. As you look at your life 
Ask yourself the question, what would your life be like? What would your life look like if you decided not to care what people thought of you? What would your life be like if you decided to give up some of your fears? What would your life be like if you decided to become courageous? What would your life be like if you decided to act on your dream, if you did what you felt in your heart? You know what courageous means? Tom Ruskin and Randy Reed said, they said that courage comes from a French word which means of the heart. That's how does it feel to you? He says it's courage, you know, it takes courage to, to live. Because most people go through life not allowing themselves to step out because they don't want to let go. They don't want to be blown around. They don't want to be moved. The courage to face life's whirling wind of contradictions. The courage to love yourself. The courage to love. For years, I was afraid to love. The courage to take a chance. The courage to be who you are. He says, courage isn't for somebody else, for medals, applause, or moral debts. Courage is what at that moment feels most right for you. Not just situational ethics, but what feels right in your heart, the word of the heart. What feels right in your heart? One great philosopher says, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. What does that mean? That valiant people aren't afraid? No, no, no. It means that they experience that fear and they move forward. They move forward anyhow. Many people are dead now. Many people are allowing their dreams to die. Many people are allowing their ideas to lie dormant and collect dust. Many people have all this talent and ability that they are allowing to be in buried inside of them that they will take with them to their graves because they didn't have the courage to be who they are. And I say, as you begin to look toward the future and manifesting your greatness, it's going to take everything in you, everything in you, that your life deserves the concentrated effort to begin to look at how is it that I can express more of me? How is it that I can bring my ideas out here now? How is it? And start living with a sense of urgency because you're here today. You're gone today. Life is unpredictable. It's uncertain. There are no guarantees. No guarantees out here at all. So holding back, what are you waiting on? Ask yourself, what's the benefit of your waiting? What's the benefit of your not living your dream? What's the benefit of not listening to yourself? Oh, please listen to yourself. You know the feelings, if you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. Think about that windshield, man. Why is that windshield so big? So you can see where you're going. It's way more important where you're going than where you've been. Don't you see that? That's why the rear view mirror is so small, because it is nowhere near as important as it is as to where you're going. Where you been just allows you to take a glance so you can make sure you cleared it so you can see if there's room enough for you to make your next move so you can know that you've gone through it and go ahead on about your business. But that windshield, that windshield is for vision. A man without a dream or vision shall perish. That windshield is for somebody going somewhere. That windshield is for somebody up there trying to make another move. I'm going to go right, I'm going to left, I'm going to get off on this exit, I'm going to take this detour, I'm going to handle this sign, there's a new route, there's only so many miles left to go. That's what the windshield got. Let me tell you something, man. When you see a mile sign, you're driving on the freeway, you're on the interstate, and you let's say you're driving to a particular city, and you see a sign that says that city is 38, uh, 138 miles away. That lets you know where you're going and you're on the right path. Now, if you keep looking in the rear view mirror, you'll never know how close you are. You'll never know. Because you're driving your car, looking in the rear view mirror, you all on the shoulder, you hear them rocks up under your car, you done scared yourself to death. Because you know why? Because you keep looking in the rear view mirror. Get out the rear view mirror. If God got you through it, it's done. Move on. You can't drive your car looking in the rear view mirror. You can't. If you keep looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to keep crashing your car. 
There's a reason why the rear view mirror is this big and the windshield is this big. That's a reason for it. Because all the rear view mirror does is allows you to see what you've passed and to prevent what you've passed from coming up on you again. That's all the rear view mirror is for. The windshield is your future. It's where you're going. It's where you're headed. I hope you all picked up this today. And think about that, how that affects your life. If you got someone who you feel has wronged you and you carrying that, that's like a cancer. And all it's doing is eating away at you. Do you know how many people I've had to forgive that have never asked me for forgiveness? You know how many people I just let go so I could just go where God had for me? Because I just ain't had no more time to spend no more time thinking about that. Let that be a lesson to you. Some, you know what my father told me a long time ago? He said, son, when a fool is talking, listen very carefully. Because listening to a fool is important. Because knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do. Look, man, if you got something that's been bothering you in your life, get past it. I've always known this, but somebody told me something one time about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is you. See, your unwillingness to forgive another person is like you sipping the poison, waiting on them to die. You can't sip the poison of unforgiveness and expect them to die. Forgiveness is for you. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, if there's something that you have been given, if you've heard something within yourself that you know that, that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you, it doesn't work for you, it's not giving you what you want, and there's something else that you want to do, don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it, to build a case on why you can't have it, to tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances, because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources. Don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now. Where your life is right now is not you. That's just what it is right now. But the possibilities for you are unlimited. If you're in a rebuilding process, it's unlimited. If you're coming back from adversity and devastation, it's unlimited of what you can do. That's the capacity of human beings. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many flops you've had. It doesn't matter how much money you've lost. In fact, I see it only as an investment of what you learn from life, not losses, but investments of what's possible for you. And I say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin, to act on your dream as you start just trying to find your way doing what you can with what you have you will start seeing things opening up for you you'll start attracting people you say where they come from things will start coming together clicking for you, you say whoa you start brainstorming ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it the key to it is to begin to focus on what it is you want to do. Why, Les? Why is that important? Because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you that you haven't even called on yet. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. If we don't put ourselves in a position where we have to use them. So one of the most important things is reading a book that's a really interesting book called Instant Millionaire. And the guy said, put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills or swallow half the pool of life. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. So what is it? How do we handle that whole piece? Throw your whole self into it. See, most people go at it tentatively. They don't give all their stuff. They don't concentrate. They don't put everything they've got in them. One guy wrote a book called, All You Can Do Is All You Can Do and all you can do is enough. 
but he said, make sure you do all you can do. And if we're honest this evening, we know that we haven't done all we can do. So as we look at the future, we can decide that from this day forward, as I look at my personal relationships, if I look at my professional relationships, if I look at my family relationships, as I look at all the dimensions of my life, looking at myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, I'm going to do all I can do to develop me, to bring my talent out here, to make a contribution to life. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Have you ever found yourself stuck? in one of life's storms and no matter how hard you try no matter what you do it seems that you can't make any headway so many times the storms in our life we didn't prepare for them we didn't plan for them we didn't ask for them we didn't even cause them they just suddenly happen i want to talk to us this morning about hidden blessings in the storms of life each of us this morning is in either one of three situations you are either headed towards a storm or you are just coming out of a storm or you are in a storm right now but whatever your situation God is in control storms come suddenly but God is not surprised I still believe that things can turn around for me. I still believe that this is not my final position. I still believe that my family can get better. I still believe that if I lose this job, there is another job for me. I still believe that my marriage is not over. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to keep your hope. Clap somebody and say, I believe. Is there anything you believe in that you'll sweat for, that you'll work for, that you'll labor for, that you'll commit yourself to? Is there anything that you love other than yourself? Just because we have a problem is not an indication that God doesn't love us our faith will be tested at different times in our life if we weren't going to have any problems we wouldn't need any faith that's what faith is for faith takes us through the times that we don't understand and helps us come out victorious on the other side you may be going through something but the good news is you're going through you're still moving you're still alive you're still breathing you're going somewhere you're going through you're not devastated in the middle of you're going through and guess what when you come out on the other side you're going to be stronger than you were when you went in and you won't even smell like smoke we get disappointed in the people that don't help us along the way but just because you're disappointed in people don't jump off the ship and drown in the sea just because people let you down don't give up on God who never will just because you lost a job, don't stop trusting that God is my provider. Sometimes you have to go through something to really get your insight, to find out who you really are, to find out what you really got, to find out that you're tougher than you thought you were, to find out that you can do more than you thought you could do. Through my eyesight, I connect with that which is around me, not that which is within me. And sometimes I cannot be delivered by that which is around me. I can only be delivered by that which is within me. If I look around me, I see circumstances. If I look in me, I see hope. So sometimes in order to really get your focus, you have to shut down your eyesight. 
to build up your insight. Shut your eyes to what you see and turn on your insight to what you believe. You can't help victims when you see yourself as a victim. You have to announce your recovery to yourself. You gotta command yourself, get up out of this hospital bed and start to move it. Clarity. Because when you get in a storm, you become real clear of what matters and what does not. When you get in a storm, you're not trying to say, oh my God, let me get my Gucci bag. No, no, no. When you're in a storm, you get clarity as to what matters. Your priorities come into view when you're in a storm. So if you can't control something and you can't get control of it, you have to at least embrace what you can. There's only so much you can do and you cannot completely eliminate it. But you can't control it, so why are you going to worry about it? Why are you going to stress about it? If there's something that's completely beyond your control, you've got to detach from it and not let yourself get stressed about it. Dreams without goals remain dreams, just dreams, and ultimately fuel disappointment. Dreams without goals. Yearly goals, light goals, daily goals, monthly goals, hourly goals. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. You understand? Someone's gonna get the candy in life. There's always candy in life. That pinata eventually always breaks down. Do you want to be the person who was there in the beginning hitting as hard as you could and sacrifice it and never get the candy? Or are you going to get something for your pain? Or are you going to get something for your effort? Or are you going to get something for this sacrifice you're making? You've got to get something for this pain. You've got to stick in the game until the candy comes out. And then we all get to celebrate. I promise you there's going to be a payoff for you. The big challenge is to make something out of each opportunity. Now, if winters are always going to occur in our life, shouldn't we benefit from them too? Come the next winter, you could be on the inside looking out, seated by a warm fire, the company of a good friend, and those unique feelings of security in spite of the circumstances or the season. Don't go by what you feel. Your feelings don't always tell you the truth. Your emotions will try to convince you that it's never going to work out. Your mind will tell you all the reasons it's not going to happen. Look how big those obstacles are. A walk by faith. It may still be dark out, but I know you start the day in the dark. I know that means light is on the way. Keep doing the right thing. You're in a new day. You pass midnight. It may be three in the morning. I've learned the longer it's taking, the better it's going to be. God is getting you prepared for the blessing He's already prepared for you. When it's taking a long time, that's because the blessing is bigger than you can handle right now. He's getting you stronger, more mature, more confident. Don't be discouraged because it's been dark a long time. That's a sign God is about to do something that you've never seen. It's going to be bigger, more rewarding, more fulfilling than you've ever imagined. You have to be honest with yourself and truthful with yourself. And I think a lot of times what it is, is for me, I was expecting things from people that I wasn't giving to people. And so that's very selfish, you know? So I had to look at myself and say, you know what? This part of my personality needs to be changed. It needs to be fixed. So it's that reality that you have to have with yourself and that, that truthfulness and not knowing that it doesn't make you weak by admitting these things. It doesn't make you less by admitting these things. Begin to know now that the night will pass, and as you learn to grow and progress, you will better understand how to handle every night and better live every day. Don't be afraid to face the facts of life. 
It is not negative to understand that the winters always come. Don't clip the word impossible out of the dictionary. Don't say I don't want to hear the problem. I don't want to see the difficulty. Don't show me the weed. Don't say anything negative. Only see the positive. That's foolish. There is a thin line between positive thinking and kidding yourself. And remember, there's also a thin line between faith and folly. such a good fight that when I look at what other people call a fight, what they call a fight is what I call normal. I fought my way up. I fought to get to work. I fought to stand. I fought to carry on. I fought to live. I fought to get out of the bed. I fought with my fears, my anxieties, my insecurities. I fought with haters, liars, backbiters, and betrayers. And many times I laid in the bed. I couldn't go to sleep because I was fighting with my Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Everyone took ownership of their mistakes. Everyone took ownership of the problems. Take ownership of your job, of your future, and take ownership of your life. And lead. Lead yourself and your team and the people in your life. Lead them all to victory. Make your move before you're ready. We're in, instructed in life to walk by faith and not by sight. See, you want to really begin to stretch yourself. You want to become a risk taker. Most people won't do that. See, most people engage in low life living, low risk living. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. Then what else is there? Anybody who's not ever willing to risk will never do very much in this world. And in all probability, you'll end up being quite bored with your life. A couple things that I said last night that I don't want you to forget is walking by faith is taking step one before you know what step two is. After a few times, you get a little more used to it and it's not quite as scary, but taking a step of faith is stepping out to do something when you don't know how it will be provided for that you believe with all your heart that it's what God has told you to do. Life is short and unpredictable. And so you want to begin to take some chances. You want to begin to challenge yourself and make it okay to fail and learn from your failures. Don't allow fear of failure to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You've got to die to leave here. you got to make changes. you got to say no. you got to disappoint people. You got to walk away from some stuff. You have to. And so stepping away from things has felt much more dangerous to me than taking on five new things. Does anybody get it? Anybody out there, you get it. Trying to learn early the consequences of errors in judgment, poor behavior. And then try to learn from others that have gone down a, a disastrous road and sure enough they suffered the consequences and you say, wow, then I'm going to change direction because I don't want those consequences. That's called being doubly smart, learning from errors in judgment. A few simple disciplines practice every day. Now you're on the road to success. A few errors in judgment repeated and you can turn anything around. Once you see that you're suffering either early consequences or severe consequences, all you have to do now is shut down that route, pick another destination and start going that way with some easy disciplines that day by day gather momentum and now one success leads to another leads to another. Here's what we call that, disciplines, easy disciplines. 
All disciplines affect each other. Every discipline affects the rest. Every lack of discipline affects the rest. What's interesting about success is starting a new discipline, a couple of new disciplines, and sure enough, once you've gained just a little bit of success in a couple of new disciplines, it'll inspire you to clean up the rest. It'll inspire you to fine tune all of your other disciplines. Each lack of discipline affects the rest. Solving problems, going from errors in judgment to easy disciplines that can change it all. And if you start that journey, it doesn't take long for new signs of success to appear. I got such great results that first year that I made these incredible changes, learning extra skills, putting together extra disciplines, working harder on myself than on my job. The early signs of the fact that I was going to arrive at a more positive destination, I was hooked. It didn't take but a few months, less than a year, and I was hooked for life. So when you begin to say, what is it that I want to leave? What contribution that I want to begin to make? What difference do I want to make in life? What is it that I want to do with the rest of the life that I have left? What chances I need to take? What risks do I need to begin to embrace? What fears do I need to step on? What areas of my life am I dead right now? What dreams? You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. That's, see, that's when people go out and, and strike out on their dreams. That's when people get out of relationships where they're dying together rather than growing together. See, you will, when you put yourself in that kind of situation, I'm reminded of, of two frogs that, that were hopping down the road and they fell into a bottle of milk. And one was hopping up and down for a while and he drowned. He just gave up. But this other frog just kept on kicking. He wouldn't give up. He just kept on kicking. And pretty soon he churned that milk into butter and he walked on out. I ask you to start that same journey. Let your new skills, new disciplines affect all of the rest. You really won't be happy if you don't produce. Six-sevenths of our life was to be devoted to labor and work, to produce, to produce a work of art, to produce a good family to produce an enterprise. That's the essence of life in its best form first, is to be a producer. What is the reason for the seed and the soil and the sunshine and the rain and the seasons of life and its miracle? What's the reason for all of that? Here it is in a nutshell for your notes, to see what you can do with it. We've got books to read and we've got classes to attend and we've got, you know, things to do and things to learn. And if you put it all together, you can have not only your health, but your fortune. You know, why not see what you can do with what you've been handed? As basic as seed and soil and sunshine and rain. Here's what all of us have the miracle and it's almost godlike in its potential. The ability to recreate. Only God can create the sunshine, the rain, the seasons, the miracle of life. But here's what humans can do. Recreate those components into a harvest by planting the seed, reaping the rewards in the harvest. We call that recreation, to recreate, to take your hours and your energy and your life and a bit of skill and create, actually recreate a career, a future, possibilities, fortune, recreate. And that changed my life. It was Oliver Wendell Holmes who said that once a person's mind is expanded with an idea, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. So some of you are going to experience a breakthrough. Some of you are going to go back and look at your dreams and brush them off. Whatever goal that you have in mind, I want that to be a goal that will challenge you, something that will make you stretch. It was Osborne who said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it? Whatever it is, bring it back out there. How are you going to do it? That will come to you in due time. See, you don't get in life what you want, ladies and gentlemen. You get in life what you are, not what you want. See, the good news is that we can always become more by working to develop ourselves. You've got to begin to take a look at your life and look at where are you right now? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What gives your life a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy? What does a full, rich life mean to you? What is it that you could love doing seven days a week? Think about that. 
That takes an incredible psychology. But in that psychology, we bump onto limits, and that's what you gotta shift. And if your psychology is solid, then you gotta say, where are the skills I'm missing? Because that's equally important. And you won't be happy if you aren't really extending yourself. Because here's really the goal of the human adventure, the full development of all your potential. Why not see how far you can go, how much you can earn, how much you can share? how much you can give. Why not see what all you could be? That's why at my age, I'm still working, traveling the world, doing what I've done for all these years, is to see what else I can become. How much stronger could I become? How much more refined could I be in my working with business partners and all the rest? Why not go for that ultimate challenge on and on, as far as you can, take it as far as you can. Friendship is one of the greatest support systems in the world. Nourish it, protect it, look after it. Develop it to the best of your ability. Next is your heritage. Keep your heritage alive. That's what's made America great. It's a combination of a variety of heritages from all over the world. People have been coming from all the countries of the world to America, bringing with them their gifts. Gift of business ethics, gift of government, gift of music, 